Thanks to Punk.de and AOE Media for your yearly sponsorships. Although we would like to believe that Type 3 is the center of the universe, not always is data actually available in the MySQL database um, that comes with Type 3, but uh, Francois? You have hello. made a an, yeah hello. <laughs> you have made an interesting uh, way to uh, to import uh, data from external sources, and that's what you will be showing us right now. Yes, exactly. We often had the requirement from clients that they had some data internally in their company, or they were running some special third-party application for some purpose, mm -hmm. but they needed that information to also be displayed on their public website. That was a very common requirement that we faced. So we developed a system where we could easily connect to a variety of sources and get data from these sources and store it into local tables so that when we need to display this data, we don't need to connect to that source at that time, but the data is already here okay. locally. What if the data is updated externally from Type 3? Uh, the data is most of the time not meant really to be uh, updated on the Type 3 side, although it is possible because you update a number of fields, you will update a number of fields in a table, but maybe not all. So. If you know what you're doing, you may have fields that come from the external source and other fields which are worked on on the type of free side. Okay, but it does synchronize the external source when the external source gets updated. Yes, yes. It can resynchronize the original import and yes. stuff like that. Basically, what you get is a backend module where you have a list of all the tables that are synchronized in some way. Let's let's look at it. Yeah, let's look at it. So. On this screen, we are already in the backend module provided by the external data import tool, mm -hmm. which is added to the user tools section. Yeah. And this uh, data that you see is provided by a tutorial extension, which accompanies the external import extension. So there's external import extension and a tutorial, which uh, makes it yeah, easy to step into this and, uh, and you know, play a bit okay. at first. So we can see that we have four uh, tables which will receive synchronization. One table here is a custom defined table for yeah because it doesn't exist a departments mm -hmm. table which doesn't exist in two type of three we need to define departments. But then we see that we are also synchronizing to the FE users table which is a yeah a basic table of type of three will we'll import data also into existing table. We're actually importing data twice into that table. We're okay. importing different data from different sources yeah. into the same table. This is also okay. okay. And finally, we have a Teams, which is also a, a custom defined table. Okay, yeah. And from this backend module, we can start manual synchronizations. Yeah. But the module, of course, also provides a scheduler task so that uh, data can be synchronized at any frequency that's mm -hmm. needed so one, once per day, several times per day, once per month, yeah. whatever yeah. frequency is needed to, uh, to refresh the data. Uh, yeah, just so we see the process, uh, if I start the synchronization, just a simple synchronization mm -hmm. here. Oops, sorry, that was a right click. It said that it's running, and now it's saying that it has in inserted three new records, okay. mm -hmm. which were read from the external source that's yeah. defined here. Yeah. Uh, in the tutorial, to keep it simple, it's simply uh, flat files which are provided with the extensions and are read with one of the connector services, which is an important aspect also of this development. Because? Data sources may be uh, from a very wide variety of application and formats. So to make this flexible, uh, I imagine the class of services called connectors which define an API for uh, telling it to fetch data mm -hmm. and give me back the data. So all I need is to have a, a specific connector and then I tell this table is going to import data from this source using this connector and then whatever additional parameters are necessary for that specific connector. So by default there exists one which is uh, for CSV files, it's capable of reading more or less any flat file. Okay and making it into a PHP array. Mm -hmm. So it is this array that then external data import received. In development, we have also an ODBC connector, we have a XML feed connector. All the point is that 
then it doesn't matter. We receive the data in the same format and we can handle it and we don't have to worry about the connection. It's delegated to the yeah. service. What the backend module also uh, allows you to see, it's all the definition. You have to define uh, what, ser what, yeah, what connector service you need to use, the parameters for that connection, and the mapping. Mm -hmm. So you have all this external data coming in, you have to map it to some internal fields. That's, of course, yeah. all part of importing data. And all this is achieved by actually extending the TCA uh, syntax. So okay. Because it's already a table description language. Yeah. So all I, all I did was extend it, and this extended syntax is recognized by external import. And if we click view details? And if we click on view details, um, the right. yeah, I'm on the wrong side of the <laughs> trackpad, we have a whole list of parameters, which is all that was defined. So there's a, just like in the TCA, a control part, which is a main mm -hmm. part. We define the main parameters. You say who will, will use a CSV connector. We will okay. re read that file, plus additional parameters for the yeah. file. We're going to store the data in some sys folder, plus a number of other options. It has a lot of options. Mm -hmm. Let's not detail all this here. And then you have a columns mapping. So for each column, okay. you say which external field corresponds to which internal field. Yeah, sounds easy and logical. Yes, it sounds easy and logical. As long as we stay with simple files, it can get a bit hairy when you need to do relations, for example. Of course, ah, yeah. you also yeah. need to sometimes to rebuild relations on the type of side, which means you have to match the keys, mm. the primary keys from outside to the primary keys, the UID that we have inside Type yeah. 3. So it gets a bit more complicated. There's a, uh, an example here where, uh, here we see we can also use a call user function. So it's possible to do some kind of last minute mm -hmm. transformation on Somebody the incoming wants to talk to you. data. Ah, yeah, yeah apparently. <laughs> Sorry for that. Uh, and um, here we see, for example, we have the front-end user is related to a department. Mm -hmm. So we say that we import the data from the department field. Yeah. And it's going to be matched against uh, the department's table. Yes. So that we can then build a relation, not on the, this external key, whatever mm -hmm. it was, but on the UID key that we have inside Top of Free. Okay. So Later, we can build relations as we are used to them. We can use the type of free database API yeah. without worrying about some special formats from yeah. this external source. Yeah. That's a basic idea of the extension. As I said before, it can also be uh, scheduled because you, of course, will want mm -hmm. to regularly update the data. This was designed originally for older versions of Type of Free already, so it can schedule with Gabriel or with the new scheduler available mm -hmm. as from 4.3. And there's a shortcut actually where you can define a synchronization straight from the backend module okay. because that makes it a bit easier. But of course, you can also go to the scheduler backend module and define uh, the task there. And for example, if we add the task here, we don't need to st set the start date, it will start automatically. I say I want that at, let's say, one in the morning every day. So that's just like the scheduler, it uses a cron mm -hmm. syntax. And uh, I click on set synchronization. So now it tells me that synchronization was saved. And if I look here in the column about automatic synchronization, I see that one synchronization is activated, it yeah. tells me when it's going to run the next time and what the frequency is. Mm. I can also activate synchronization for all external tables, so all will be synchronized in one go, respecting an important uh, factor here, which is a priority of the okay, table. Because yeah. <coughs> it's very important if you build relations, you have to import the data you want to relate to first, otherwise mm -hmm. you cannot relate to it, Okay. obviously. Yeah. <laughs> And this extension is available in TR at the moment? Yes, it is already released to the TR. Uh, so there's the extension itself called external underscore import. There's also the tutorial I mentioned. And for connector services, you have the base connector extension, which provides the API and a specific implementation for CSV files. And it's uh, in beta or stable state? 
Uh, we consider that to be stable because we're using it now for, for two years in various client websites, importing lots of okay. information. Yeah. So it's, it's really uh, a proven solution. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Francois, for, uh, for demonstrating. It was um, great to see some um, tough work like, like this made very solid, it looks, and uh, yeah. impressive. So, um, oh, uh, may I add a little something? Yes, you may. <laughs> Connector services actually can be used to interact with uh, remote sources for other reasons too. If mm -hmm. you, for example, the CSV connector service is about reading a CSV file. So in another application, if you need to read CSV files, you may also use the connector services. They need not be used only in the context of external import. Okay, cool. And any more uh, points? You wanted to yes, get external import as an API also. So rather than ah, just so external import the grabbing the data, yeah. if you have some application that already has data, you can mm -hmm. pass it to external import and benefit so from all the... I can use it as an API in my own Yeah, and benefit from all the mapping stuff and such. Cool. And that's it. Thanks for sharing with us. You're welcome. Thank you.